This is exactly right. Welcome. Hi. It's the mini-sode of My Favorite Murder. The mini-sode version of My Favorite Murder. It's this version of My Favorite Murder that's shorter than the others with the longer introduction. Yes. That's Karen Kilgariff. And that's Georgia Hartstar. Karen Ann Kilgariff? Karen Lynn Kilgariff. Karen Lynn Kilgariff. My sister's Ann. I knew, that's why I did that. And Georgia Marie Hartstar. Miriam. Miriam, I said. <laughs> um, okay, we read you your stories. Ready? Begin. Congratulations. I'm going to. <laughs> I'm going to read the first one because uh-huh. this is the email, and the subject line is "I held up the light up sign in St. Louis." Oh, we were pointing at it. So in the ver- this is the best. At the end of our live shows, we tell everybody that we're going to pick somebody to come up and tell us their hometown murder, and. Uh, and the St. Louis show, we looked up and the very last row in the balcony, like high, high, high up, somebody held up a huge Christmas lights light up sign that said I was almost murdered. <laughs> and it was so hilarious. And we really only pick people from the first like 10 rows because it just will take too long for them to get to the front row. Yeah. To get to the stage. So it's more for convenience. Yeah. The whole thing people wish we wouldn't do at all. So it's like the, we have, that's the way we do it is we keep it quick. But listen. We keep it moving. But there, it was so hilarious to see a light up sign fly up uh-huh. into the air from the furthest apart possible way yeah. well listen now we get to learn that story. tell me everything well guess what georgia and karen my friends and i were at the show in st louis and made that awesome light up sign <laughs> we figured you might be interested in how our intern almost got murdered after seeing it <gasps> well you are right about that mm-hmm. i'm a social i'm a school social worker in st louis city and this year have an intern who i will refer to as sarah a few weeks ago we were talking about the podcast and she nonchalantly says i told you about how i almost got murdered right <laughs> Obviously, I made her tell me everything. After college, Sarah moved to New Hampshire to work with teenagers with emotional and behavioral issues. The facility used a co-living model, so she was paired with a young woman and lived with her. Oh my God. At some point, they had to take the girl to the hospital for a suicide assessment, but she was declared to not be a danger to herself. Sarah's supervisor said she was good to take her client back to the facility on her own. A few miles from the facility, the client opens the passenger side door, looks to her left and says, goodbye, Sarah. (gasps) Being a quick thinker, being the quick thinker she is, Sarah grabbed her arm and got the car pulled over. The girl gets out of the car in an attempt to get away. Sarah attempted to restrain the client, but is 110 pounds soaking wet, and her client was much bigger, so obviously she didn't win this one. The client's able to get her hands around Sarah's neck, and she passes out. She comes to a few minutes later, and this chick is dragging Sarah by her feet to a nearby lake. No! Holy shit. No! Hold on. Uh, I just had four waves of chills go across me. <laughs> Oh, no, no. When she wakes up, she asks the chick what the hell she's doing. Um, she responds that she was dragging Sarah down to the lake, um, to drown her and then kill herself because she thought that Sarah would leave her after all this shit she just pulled. Uh, at this point, I was so in shock about this story that I forget what happened next. <laughs> <laughs> but naturally, Sarah had some PTSD and moved back to Missouri shortly after this incident. She's now in grad school and is one kick ass intern. Oh, honey. In other news, I also do a lot of work with families who have lost a loved one, and there's a growing movement in the grief world to change some of the language around suicide. Mm. Historically, the phrase that um, has been used is commit suicide, but as you are all well aware, mental health issues typically play a role in suicide, and as you also know, committed Mm -hmm. is typically a word associated with crime, and more specifically, murder. So now, in the grief world, we use the language completed suicide, (gasps) or died by suicide wow. and this language helps remove a little of the stigma as well as it decriminalizes the act itself i thought you might be interested in that tidbit since mental health is something that you talk about 
we also reach a lot of people with this. Po- oh, you also reach a lot of people with this podcast. And so thought others might also be interested in knowing that. That is interesting. I love that. Um, sorry, luck didn't swing your way at the casino. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, sure did. No. Um, but if it makes you feel better, it rarely goes well for me either. Thanks for the great show in St. Louis. Glad to, um, glad you made it out to see us in the Midwest. SSDGM Christine. That's so interesting. Isn't it so funny that little things like that, that word commit, changes people's lives yeah. that you will never understand because we would never pinpoint it right until someone points it out to you even le- like the term sex worker like we wouldn't think about it until someone pointed out to you that the word prostitute is demeaning right until someone tells you that yeah and just says hey we're just trying to make this change right can you help out like that's what i don't understand about people who are so adamant against like yeah like when people go oh this is the language we like to use yeah. and it's like i get to say whatever i want yeah. it's like yes you do get to say whatever you want but you don't have to you could actually make us the tiniest effort which is to right. change a word we're changing you're just trying to change the conversation to benefit the people who you're talking about and you have a fucking problem changing that language even though it has nothing to do with you and it's yeah. what other people are requesting yeah it's fuck just, you it's just odd it's the same thing with like it's just good to look at things through other people's filters right. and then go oh yeah i see how you would you wouldn't want us to be saying sure. that basic critical thinking you know and just kind of an empathy for your fellow man uh, uh just the slightest fucking empathy that makes it sound like we're all like it's us but well, we are it is yeah that's <laughs> no, true it's that is true it's all <laughs> us okay this is uh this one hits home hard this says it's the subject is don't sleep naked uh-oh Which, i'm fucking sorry no i don't sleep naked but but you like you like your nudism so you know i sleep in my underwear and sometimes i'll think what if there's an earthquake right now you just keep those pajama bottoms right at the end of the bed. They're close by, but then I'm naked from the top up. Well, keep some other clothes on the other side. But you know what? Problem solver. Karen Kilgara. Right? I mean, I'm always coming out. The doorbell rings at my house all day. It seems like all day there's people, people ringing my doorbell. Because you live in a house and people want to sell people shit at a house. That's and like right. deliver stuff all the time. Deliver stuff, sell things. Sometimes they'll just be a neighbor like, hey, did you know that your thing is that? Right. So I can't. <laughs> hey, did you know that your thing is that? <laughs> Just a kind of vague. Where I live in an apartment place and it's like, don't look at anyone in the eye. It's the best. Like, don't, if I like am leaving the house and I hear someone in the hallway, I like wait behind the door until I, you know, it's like polite. (laughs) Yes. Exactly. You don't want to, you don't want to get involved and you know other people don't want to get involved. No, I'm, I have the place where, and I think I told you this, but like, there'll be people that knock on my door and they'll be like, yeah, I work for a, like a house painting company. You, you need to paint your house. And I'll be like, well, I know. But I'll, ca- like, I'll call you when I need you. Yeah. Don't come here and get ring my door to guilt me. Totally. I'm trying to, to watch. To tell you what's wrong with your fucking life. I'm trying to watch the fucking Norwegian series Monster. Is Let that me. the new one? Okay. That's the one I'm in love with. Okay. Oh, also a quick tip uh, that I read about uh, earthquakes okay. is to always keep an old pair of tennis shoes under your bed, like right by where you sleep mm-hmm. in case you ever need to get up in the middle of the night and make a run for and there's fucking broken glass, glass everywhere. everywhere. That's so right. Keep tennis shoes, old pair of tennis shoes under your bed and in the trunk of your car. Oh, good. Mm-hmm. Also, I, oh, I have uh, flashlights under every like bed, couch. Keep flashlights all around your house if you live in LA. You're better than me. Do you know what else I read about? And this is a little bit anxiety written times, okay. but old cell phones, you, you don't have a, you know, service on them anymore, but you can still call 911 from them. Oh. So if you, plug them in and someone said this after reading uh, or hearing Jennifer Moray's survivor story about how she called from the bathroom 911 yeah plug them in in like weird rooms in your house so you always have a cell phone in there in case you ever need to like get trapped somewhere and need to call 911 that's a great idea right yeah tennis shoes and cell phones that's very good just constantly worry is the point I'm making well but you you won't it's just good to be prepared preparedness it's preparedness it's like you don't don't term it anything negative right. or any reason to beat yourself up hey you're gonna be the one stuck with glass everywhere sure. it's like you don't be it's like it's not cool to have glass in your feet no don't home invasion robbery and earthquakes are things that happen 
why my you, just like simple preparations for them it's just a possibility yeah it's ju- also a possibility someone's gonna ring your doorbell and be like look i made you a cake also be prepared for that <laughs> oh sorry I, right. ge- I gestured right into Elvis's face. Right <laughs> I know there. he did not. But he understood because he liked he liked that. Um, he did. He agrees with you. He loves cake. He says, "Listen, <laughs> can you make her slap- stop sleeping naked, please?" <laughs> That's all he wants. And just a nightgown. Jesus Christ! Oh, She's heart. just always okay. Hi, Karen, Georgia, and all those cute animals, and that must include Stephen. <laughs> um, I'm a new listener, and I can't turn this podcast off. Thanks for sharing my obsession with murder. My hometown murder story didn't happen in my hometown or in my lifetime. However, since I was a little child, it's been a huge story in my family. Before my mom and dad married, my mom lived in South Carolina and my dad lived about an hour away. He'd spend a few nights a week uh, with her in a first floor studio apartment. Mm. Red flag. One night, my mom, who was sleeping naked, (gasps) woke up to a man holding a knife to her neck. She was told to get up and give him her car keys, money, and credit cards. She found and gave him all of that. He backed her into the kitchen. She's backed up against the door. In a fight or flight panic, she pissed on his feet. Yes. (gasps) (laughs) That distracted him enough for her to run out of the kitchen door. Yes. My mom had her run to the neighbors, an older married couple. The man answered the door to my mom. She's naked and panicked and scared. They gave her a robe and called 911. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. This should be called, she peed on his feet. Yeah. Well, then, the, but then we're giving all, like, all away. We wouldn't have had that beautiful moment. All right, let's start over. Um, <laughs> the guy took her car and fled. A few days later, her car was found totaled a couple miles away. He ended up being arrested for a string of break-ins. The last break-in ended in murder. <sighs> Turns out he stalked his victims before breaking in. He knew my dad wouldn't be there that night and my mom would be alone. So stay sexy and don't sleep naked. You never know what will wake you up in the night. Mary. However, Mary, may I argue that if she hadn't been naked, peeing on his fucking shoes wouldn't have made such an impact. <laughs> it could be argued. That it could a be argued. strong, <laughs> unfiltered fucking string of piss That's on his right. shoes is what distracted him. Not a like a you know underwear trickle also you know you're right filter that would have been it would have been quieter and it would have been like what's this now a warm trickle and it would have been almost probably funnier if she had pants on it would have affected her more than it affected him but a naked lady freaking out and then i like to picture that in that moment in the flight or fight moment as opposed to acting scared while she was peeing all of a sudden she acted like crazy eye contact about being peeing like stuck her tongue out and then just peed on his shoes like yeah bitch yeah like fuck you here's the last thing i have to fight you and it worked and it worked honey just pee thanks mary's mom also don't forget you can also projectile vomit Ooh. Always vomit on people if you pu- <gasps> if you're a, pu- a puker like myself. I don't think I can. I can't do it on command without at least some, you know. But do it. Okay. I mean, like if you can. Sure. No, I mean right now. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Go. Um. Let's see. The subject line of this is badass ER nurse grandmother saves hospital from shooter. Oh fuck. Fuck. Howdy, Karen and Georgia and Stephen and Kitties. Let's get right to it. So I come from a long line of nurses and medical professionals, but I went into the arts. Sorry, mom. (laughs) Uh, So my house has never been lacking in bizarre stories. When I heard this one over Thanksgiving, however, I just knew I had to write in. My grandmother is kind of infamous in our smallish southern town for being a badass ER nurse that always went above and beyond the call of duty. This particular incident stands out from the rest, and I can't believe I hadn't heard it until now. It's around 3 a.m. in the midst of an already hectic night shift, and my grandmother is walking down the hallway of the hospital with a security guard, we'll call him Terry, just shooting the breeze. They're walking along when the elevator door starts to open in front of them and they stop to let the person get off. One guy Mm. um, off gets off gets one lone guy who stands there for a moment, faces them, and then pulls a gun ra- aimed right at my grandmother. They stand, they all stand there frozen for a second until Terry, scared shitless, turns around and makes a beeline down the corridor. And my grandmother yells in the most southern ima- voice imaginable, Terry, don't you dare leave me here. Oh my God. That's, that's how I pictured Karen, it. Karen, that was amazing. Thank I you. needed that. <laughs> but Terry's long gone. Terry. So it's just grandma and the shooter. She stands there for a second with a gun pointed at her. Then she, then she puts her hands on her hips, points her finger at him and says, young man, you better put that away or you're about to get in trouble. And he does. 
and he does. Grandma! Oh my god, I love He's, her. He stands there for a second, really confused, puts the gun away, gets back in the elevator, and walks out of the hospital. What the fuck? And that's the story of how my grandmother saved an entire hospital from some jerk with a gun. She's passed. She passed away when I was young, but I've always felt this connection with her that is strengthened every time I hear a new story of her life. The way this one correlated with my love of true crime really gave her a whole new dimension mm-hmm. I didn't expect. I bet this quiet, charming Southern lady would have been very grateful for people to hear about her bravery. I also bet she gave Terry one hell of an earful. Thanks for all you do <laughs> and keep up the amazing mer- work. Much love, Micah. Oh, that's fucking Grandma. rad. Grandma. You badass. I mean... uh. That I want to end on that. It's so good. It's but so good. I mean, uh, there's many more. Support for today's show comes from HelloFresh. HelloFresh makes conquering the kitchen a reality with deliciously simple recipes and fresh, pre-measured ingredients delivered to your door. All meals come together in 30 minutes max, call for less than two pots and pans, and require minimal cleanup. Plus, with three plans to choose from, including classic, veggie, and family, there's something for everyone. So get out of that recipe rut and start cooking outside your comfort zone. This week, I'm making the hot honey chicken with barbecue roasted potatoes and buttery broccoli and the melty Monterey Jack burgers with onion jam, garlic mayo, and crispy breaded zucchini, and I'm super excited about it. For $80 off your first month of HelloFresh, go to HelloFresh.com slash Murder80 and enter the code Murder80. That's HelloFresh.com slash Murder80. Enter code Murder80 for $20 off your first four boxes. Goodbye. Okay, here's one called... Yikes in the yard. Retirement homegrown poison. Uh Uh-oh. Hi, ladies. Love the podcast and the outlet you provide, which I use to calm down while studying for final semester exams. Yes, murder calms me down over exams. Anyway, let's jump into it. (laughs) This happened last week in my hometown, so you may have heard, in Montpelier, Vermont. A woman named Betty, age 70, was arrested for testing her homegrown ricin murder on her fellow retirement home residents. (laughs) She had been fucking growing castor beans to create the poison in the retirement home's property and, wow, started feeding it to other residents. Uh Uh-oh. No one was killed. Only one case of poisoning found by the health department and FBI, but good old Betty confessed she was trying out the poisons on others so she could eventually hurt herself. Oh, no. She was testing it on everyone else because she didn't <laughs> want to test it on herself. Oh, but then ultimately was for her. Yeah, Betty, just jump off a fucking bridge. Betty. Yeah. Betty? Um, da, 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 sad, sketchy, and also, what the fuck, Betty? Have you been binge reading Mrs. Marple and, the, and thought, yep, let's make this shit real? What's Mrs. Marple? Miss Marple. Miss Marple is an Agatha Christie character. There you go. Most interesting thing to happen in Montpelier, probably since 1800. Thanks for reading and can't (laughs) wait to hear more, Maggie. Shit. Grandma, like, enough. No, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, she was trying to do more than just take her own life. Yeah. I mean, that's, she was, she was losing it. Yes or no? She sounds kind of fun, but, um... I mean, fun in the way where she just clearly doesn't give a shit about anything. <laughs> She's like, I'll just do what the fuck I want. Yeah. That, that is fun. Yeah. I do love people like that. Um, how about this subject line? Great grandfather buried alive in the Civil War. Uh huh. Ready? Hi, MFM fam. My name is Emily, and this is my go-to cool life story and something my family is half proud, half ashamed of. Oh, good. My mother's side of the family has been in the, had, has been in the Iowa, Alabama area since the early 1800s. She spelled it Iowa. Hmm. <laughs> um, and fought on the Confederate side of the Civil War, parentheses, something we are greatly ashamed of if you get my drift. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do. My great, 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 great grandfather was named Augustus Hatcher Jackson and was a private in the Confederate Army from Cahaba, Alabama. During a battle in Tennessee, he was shot in the leg, and instead of being left on the field to die, his best friend dragged him to a local house near the battlefield and left him overnight to go fetch a doctor. The family agreed to care for him until he returned the next morning. Uh -uh. When Augustus's friend returned with the doctor, the family told them that he had died in the middle of the night, and they buried him under a tree in their backyard. 
Upset and confused, his friend demanded that they dig him up so he could take him back to his family. When they dug up his makeshift coffin, they found him dead from asphyxiation, (gasps) curled in a corner with bloody fingers and scratches in the lid. The family had been union sympathizers, and after his friend left, they drugged him, dug a shallow grave, and threw him in a small crate they had in their barn. Uh -uh. Held at gunpoint, his friend and the doctor forced the family to extricate him and load him onto the doctor's wagon. They took him back to my family and buried him in the local cemetery. My mother still has the original copy of his will, and our line is survived by a daughter he had before going off to war. Thanks for reading. Stay sexy. Don't get murdered. Emily. Well, that sounds like Confederate propaganda. (laughs) Propaganda. (laughs) If I've ever heard it. That is intense. And crazy. It makes me think, did you watch the movie Be- The Beguiled? It was um, Sofia Coppola. I don't know if she wrote it, but she directed mm-hmm. it. And it stars Nicole Kidman and, and Kristen Dunst. Mm-hmm. It's really good. Mm. It's really good. I just got a screener of it, but I think... Oh, it's like Noon- Noon- Noonie? Yeah. Okay. Noonie Nooners. Nooners. It's, it's basically a Civil War drama. Can I just say that someday in my life I'm going to get screeners and I'm going to be real proud of myself. How are you going to do that? I don't know. You have to join some kind of a union, union or army. I'm going to join the union <laughs> army. But would you please go and fight fight I'm against the fight <laughs> Confederate soldiers so I can story. get DVD copies of movies that have come out <laughs> that I don't want to go and buy red mines and sit next to strangers for. Yeah. It's always too cold and too loud. Mm-hmm. I have to pee half the time. Um, send your hometown murders to my favorite murder Gmail and tell us about your shit. Nowadays, we're, we're accepting any, uh, first responder, um, nurse ER stories. We are accepting buried alive stories. Mm -hmm. We're accepting things you found in the walls of a house or a remodel story. Or above and below your house or in the yard stories. Yeah. Dug something weird up in the yard. We want to hear about it. Yep. Found stuff is great. Found. Um, and is there anything else? There's so much ghost stories. We love a good ghost story. And then, of course, just a classic, the murder that happened that you heard about when you were a child that, uh, changed you forever. Yeah. That's all we want. That's, that's all, all we're we asking want. simple things. That and we want you to stay sexy and don't get murdered. A goodbye. Goodbye. Yeah. Elvis? Want cookie? Okay. Well, I said okay. <laughs> <Bye>. <laughs>